So, welcome back student to the next class of nonlinear optics. So, this is the 10th lecture. In the previous lecture, that means in the 9th lecture, we just started the idea of nonlinear optics. So, today we will start from that point once again. So, these are the overviews of today's lecture. So, basic linear optics already we have done, but nonlinear optics we have started. So, in this particular top, in this particular class, we will going to cover the introduction of the nonlinear optics and quick overview. We just started this part in the last class. So, there are two major effects are there in the nonlinear optics. One is called the chi 2 effect and another is called the chi 3 effect. The chi 2 effect is containing with the term which is related to E square. So, polarization when the polarization is written. So, let me write here something. So, when my polarization P is represented in terms of electric field as this, we should call this P nonlinear polarization. So, only this E square term is there, no other terms are there, then the related effect is called chi 2 obviously because this chi 2 term is here. When on the other hand, if I write the nonlinear polarization term as epsilon 0 chi 3 E cube, then you have some different kind of phenomena and this phenomena is listed here. We will discuss each and every phenomena in detail in this particular course, but the important thing you should know that in all cases the electric field and the polarization is related to this simple expression where E cube term is there. In general P is represented by P linear plus P nonlinear where P linear term is nothing but the first order term which is epsilon 0 E. Now, if I add up with this nonlinear term P nonlinear term in both the cases, you will have two condition. One is where the term is related to E square and in other case the term is related to E cube. When the polarization is related to E as well as E square, then we will have the chi 2 effect. When the polarization is related to E and E cube and the chi 3 term is there. So, the phenomena related to that is called the chi 3 effect. So, now we have listed what is chi 2 effect and what is chi 3 effect. In chi 2 effect, we have four different phenomena. In fact, there are many other phenomena also, but we will going to discuss this four uh, phenomena in detail. One is electro optic effect, second is second harmonic generation, then sum and difference frequency generation. And finally, we have optical parametric amplification or OPA or optical parametric oscillation or OPO. These are the topics that we will going to cover. Today, we will just show you the overview that what is the meaning of these things in very simple way, but the detailed calculation will be done in our future classes. Now, chi 3 effects are also there. In chi 3 effects, we have also few terms like optical car effect third harmonic generation which is very important, self and cross phase modulation or in short SPM and XPM and then 4 way mixing and then finally, we will have stimulated Raman scattering. So, stimulated Raman scattering is also some sort of chi 3 effect we will going to discuss. So, now let us go to the next slide and try to find out what is there in chi 2 effects. So, nonlinear optics starts here. So, let us see what we have in this. So, this is a very old slide in the last class also we have used that the linear effect only contain P when P is proportional to E, but when P is related to E, E square, E cube, then we have the nonlinear terms. So, this nonlinear terms give rise to the nonlinear effect. In terms of electron vibration of the classical model, the classical model supposed to change under nonlinear effect because my polar my uh, polarization is not now function of E, is the function of E square and E cube. And because of that what happened when I launched the electric field which is very high, the corresponding 
the corresponding potential under which the electron is vibrating is also not remain a harmonic oscillator, it should be a anharmonic oscillator. So, we will change our model and when we change our model we will find a different kind of chi 2 and this calculation will be done in the future class in detail. So, this uh, notation and all these things is known, this figure is also shown in the earlier class that how the nonlinearity appear. So, nonlinearity is uh, basically related to very high field and we know that uh, the laser is some kind of source through which if you if you excite a medium, uh, then what happened the medium behavior of the medium will become nonlinear. This is a very famous paper as I mentioned in the earlier class where first the second harmonic generation was introduced. Now, let us understand what is the meaning of second harmonic generation. So, this is a list which we will going to cover then chi 2 effect we have electro optic effect, second harmonic generation, sum and different frequency, optical parameter amplification and in chi 3 effect these are the phenomena which we will going to discuss today. So, okay. so let us start with uh, electro optic effect and second harmonic generation. The figure already we have shown for second harmonic generation, but we did not say anything about the electro optic effect. So, the outline of the electro optic effect is nothing but, so let us concentrate here what is the meaning of electro optic effect. So, this is my source. So, I am launching an electric field to a material shown here. This is the material which is excited by the electric field and when I launch an electric field in the output I will have something. Since the material behavior is nonlinear, so I will have some different thing in the output. So, what different thing we will discuss? We will discuss here, we will get a different frequency and this frequency will be double of whatever the frequency we will have. So, we can calculate that and we can do rigorous calculation, but today we will not going to do that. Today we will just make an outline of this phenomena. So, in electro optic effect what happened that if I launch the electric field into the material, the material will behave in a nonlinear fashion as I mentioned, but there will be no change of refractive index there will be no change of refractive index. So, I launch an electric field, but the material refractive index will not going to change if I consider this to be a chi 2 effect. That means, that means if my nonlinear polarization is represented by this term, then this effect cannot leads to the change of refractive index, but we will find that the material the refractive index of the material can be changed by launching very strong electric uh, very strong electric field and this these things is called the car effect which is not the chi 2 effect, but chi 3 effect. However, we can still change the refractive index by launching some kind of DC electric field. That is the phenomena here we will going to discuss. So, I am launching electric field here, only this electric field under chi 2 effect will not going to change the refractive index of the material, but with launching electric field if I launch some kind of additional DC field here, then what happened the total electric field is now the sum of the launch electric field which is vibrating frequency omega and the DC electric field, then what happened? This DC electric field can in principle change the refractive index. That means, I am launching electric field and by launching another DC electric field, I can change or I can modulate the refractive index. This effect is called electro optic effect. Some kind of electric field, DC electric field I am launching from outside and as a result, I find that my refractive index of the material can be changed or modulated. Well, next phenomena is second harmonic generation. Second harmonic generation phenomena is very, very important. In the last slide, in the last slide, this phenomena is already explained in this particular slide in the last class. 
that if this is a laser light, if the laser light is launched to a nonlinear crystal, then what happened this nonlinear crystal will generate another wave. This wave is nothing but omega 0 multiplied by 2. So, omega 0 wave is already there, but inside the material we will have another wave which is multiple of 2 of the fundamental frequency omega 0 and in the output we have two different frequencies. In this diagram we try to find out uh, what is going on. So, nonlinear crystal the electric field strong electric is field is passing through the nonlinear crystal two different frequencies are generated here and from the prism what we will do we just disperse two different frequencies so that you can see these two different frequencies uh, side by side and this particular process can be initiated and uh, one can do that by launching a very high uh, electric field and this high electric field can be possible by just launching a laser light. So, laser is important. Anyway, so, here we are doing the same thing, I am launching a electric field omega and under chi 2 effect what happened that uh, my, if I now write, so let me briefly give you the idea. So, P nonlinear is epsilon, okay, P nonlinear is epsilon 0 chi 2 and E square. This square term basically gives you, so that means is E, if I write E is a frequency omega, then E square will be some frequency 2 omega. The e square term gives rise to the frequency 2 omega. So, this 2 omega frequency basically generate some kind of electric field which is vibrating. So, because of this 2 omega what happened? The nonlinear polarization will also vibrate with the frequency 2 omega and this nonlinear polarization basically give rise to another field which is vibrating in the frequency 2 omega. So, originally there was electric field here which is omega. Inside the system what happened? This system basically gives this electric field, the square of this electric field basically give the nonlinear polarization which now will going to vibrate P, omega, P of 2 omega. So, this nonlinear polarization now vibrating is 2 omega that means the dipole will now start vibrating with the frequency 2 omega and because of the vibration of this dipole of 2 omega they will now start generating another field inside the material which will now vibrating in a frequency 2 omega. So, directly it is related to the material property. So, light matter interaction is important, but the important thing the most important thing here is if I launch a frequency omega I can have a new frequency and this new frequency is 2 of omega. That means, we are getting some kind of if I launch uh, the one color of light say red, I can able to generate a blue light from that out of that. So, color of light will change and we call technically this is a second harmonic generation. But one can ask the question is it possible to generate third, fourth, fifth or sixth harmonic and the answer is yes. But in all the cases what happened that uh, we need to make some kind of phase matching condition to initiate these uh, higher order frequencies. That is important and this is not very easy here. Okay, so, let us go back to our slides and see what other phenomena are there. So, next two phenomena we will discuss under chi 2 effect is uh, sum and difference frequency generation. So, sum and difference frequency generation is important because in the previous uh, case we find that if I launch an electric field omega, if I launch an electric field omega, I am getting a frequency say 2 omega that is a double of that frequency. And in that case what happened I was launched just only one electric field, but here what we will going to do that I will going to launch two different electric field with two different frequencies. So, I am launching, I am launching total, this is my total electric field E, this total electric field is the sum of two electric field having two different frequencies, one is E omega 1, another is E omega 2. So, omega 1 correspond to one electric field, omega 2 correspond to another electric field. So, when these two electric fields are together inside the material, now what happened we have different kind of frequency mixing. 
because of this e square term what will happen that we will have square of this term. So, if you remember my p nonlinear here the nonlinear polarization term is epsilon 0 linear term is sitting there, but nonlinear term is still there which is related to square. So, this e square is nothing but e omega 1 plus e of omega 2 and square of that. So, there should be some kind of frequency mixing. This frequency mixing gives me either the sum of these two frequency or the difference of these two frequency. Very easily one can show that how the sum and difference of these two frequency can be generated under this second order effect. Well, uh, in second order effect also we have something called parametric optical parametric amplification. This is a very important process. So, like launching two different frequencies, now I will do the same thing, but I am just change my name. So, I change the name as signal and pump frequencies. So, if I launch one signal frequency and one pump frequency, so this is say my signal frequency and this is my pump frequency. So, what happened that because of this frequency mixing, some of the energy from the pump frequency will be now transferred to the signal frequency. So, eventually what happened the signal frequency will get amplified. So, this process is called optical parametric amplification. So, there is a relation between the pump and signal. The pump and signal can transfer the energy in between them. So, we can do some kind of proper parametric condition under which what happened that the pump can be used is energy to amplify the signal. So, what happened the pump will be depleted. So, the energy of the pump will be going down and the energy of the signal will be increased. So, this process is called optical parametric amplification. So, some kind of amplification is possible. So, we can amplify some signal through this second order effect. Well, So, the next thing is chi 3 effect. So, in chi 2 effect we find that we can generate one frequency and other frequency the combination of these two frequencies if I launch two different frequencies together. In chi 3 effect we have very important effect called optical car effect. This is one of the most important effect we have in nonlinear optics. And this effect has a very profound impl implications. So, let us try to understand what is the meaning of that. What is the meaning of that? So, here in optical car effect what happened that if I launch an electric field now you should note that P nonlinear is not related to chi 2 rather chi 3. So, I should write it as chi 3 E cube. This is the nonlinear term right now we are having inside the system. So, P nonlinear is epsilon 0 chi 3 E cube. Once we have the nonlinear term related to E cube, then what happened that if I launch an electric field here as shown it will going to change the refractive index of the system which is a very very important phenomena. Normally what happened the refractive index the refractive index n is a function of omega only. So, we know that this is a linear optics n is a function of omega. That means, if I launch an electric field with a fix, fixed frequency then what happened the material will behave and the behavior in terms of refractive index will not going to change because my omega is fixed. If I now change my omega the refractive index of the material will going to change and we will have different refractive index for different different frequencies that is a well known phenomena. And the change of refractive index with respect to omega is called the dispersion. However, in this case what we are trying to say that even if I am launching one single frequency omega, but if my launched light has a very high intensity then we will have a new expression in my hand in terms of refractive index. So, what is the new expression of the refractive index? My refractive index n can be represented 
in terms of the intensity intensity of the launched light this is the expression of Carnot linearity we will prove this expression in our future classes but you should one thing you should appreciate that here this refractive index is a total refractive index this total refractive index is now related to some sort of refractive index which is frequency dependent this is the classical refractive index we have or the linear refractive index we have on top of that we have some additive term which is n2 multiplied by i that mean, that means if i increase my intensity i there is a possibility from this equation we can see that my refractive index is going to increase so refractive index will going to increase by external electric field frequency is not going to change i just change the intensity and because of that the refractive index is changing this phenomena is called the optical car effect so in optical car effect we have a very interesting thing that from outside just changing the intensity of the light you can change the refractive index of the material which is in my opinion one of the fascinating thing one can think of in nonlinear optics okay like uh, second harmonic generation here also we have some kind of frequency mixing and in the previous case we find in the second harmonic generation if i launch an electric field of frequency omega 0 then we have some new wave in the output which is having some kind of frequency like 2 omega 0 that's why we call it is a second harmonic here we will do the similar kind of things we will have a similar kind of things in this figure we just try to find out if omega 0 is launched then omega 0 will be there in the output frequency output field but another field will going to evolve there which is of the frequency 3 omega 0 it is just the extension of the second harmonic generation and this extension is called the third harmonic generation and the obvious reason is that the frequency that is generating is the multiplication of three of the fundamental frequency because of these three we call is the third harmonic generation well next thing we will learn is self and cross phase modulation in chi 3 effect there is a thing called self phase modulation on cross phase modulation which is also very important so what is the meaning of self phase or cross phase modulation let us try to find out in this uh, figure we try to uh, show something that i am launching one light say with frequency omega 0 in the third harmonic generation or the second harmonic generation in the output we are getting some sort of frequency which is either multiplication of two of the frequency omega 0 or 3 of the frequency of omega 0 so 2 omega 0 3 omega 0 this kind of discrete frequency we are getting at the output under second and third harmonic generation however self phase modulation and cross phase modulation is a phenomenon let us try to find out what is the meaning of self phase modulation first because this uh, diagram is shown only for self phase modulation i am launching an electric field here in a medium where chi 3 is there so this medium where chi 3 is high chi 3 is not equal to 0 and high chi 3 is a material property so this is a very high chi 3 over there so let me use another color so that you can understand so chi 3 is not equal to 0 here well so if chi 3 is not equal to 0 here then we will have the third order effect and on the third order effect the self phase modulation is there and self phase modulation basically suggests that if i launch an electric field with some frequency say omega 0 this is the central frequency omega 0 then in the output we will have a distribution of the frequencies you can see that the frequency is distributed so self phase modulation basically gives me some additional frequency like this one like this one so there is a broadening of the frequencies so i will launch i am launching one particular frequency and apart from that particular frequency we have some other frequency in his red in left and right hand side so this particular process is very important and this is happening because of the fact that the refractive index is now function of intensity and because of that the phase is going to change so when the light is propagating inside the material we will show 
that the phase of the light will going to change. So instantaneous frequency inside the pulse is going to change because of that. And as a result, we will have different kind of frequencies of the pulse. So while I have launched omega 0, but at the output we will find omega 0 plus minus some kind of frequencies. In this particular figure, we try to show that. Here we have one particular frequency at sitting here, say omega 0, but here we have different frequency components. So different frequency components will be generated under cell phase modulation. Cross phase modulation is the similar kind of phenomena, but in cross phase modulation what we will do, we will not launch one light, but we will launch another strong light like this. This is another light we will going to launch. So these two light will going to interfere and similar kind of phenomena one can generate and this process is called the cross phase modulation. Okay, four way mixing. In the previous case, when chi 2 fx was there, we find out that there is a frequency sum and different frequency generation can be possible. So if I launch omega 1 and omega 2, then omega 1, omega plus omega 2 can be generated, omega 1 minus omega 2 can be generated. These are the two possibilities we have there. We will show that, mind it, in that case it was just proportional to E squared. So if E has omega 1 and omega 2, this square term suggests that there will be not much frequencies, omega 2, omega 1 frequency, 2, omega 2 frequency will be there. Apart from that, the combination of omega 1 and omega 2 is there. So omega 1 plus omega 2 will be there or omega 1 minus omega 2 will be there. But here, since the proportionality condition is E cube. So what happened? We will have more frequencies in our hand. So one particular frequencies we have here is called four way mixing. So four way mixing is basically two frequencies are there, and I will going to generate a very specific frequency, which is say we will have one frequency omega one here, another frequency omega two here. This is the figure which is there, but I am doing once again the same thing. So we will have a frequency separation here like delta omega. So now if I want to find out some frequency here which is also delta omega or some frequency here which is also delta omega, then I will have two different frequencies. If I write this is omega 3 and if I write this is omega 4, then my equation is something like that omega 1 and omega 2 is related to delta omega. So delta omega will be omega 1, omega 2 minus omega 1 and delta omega can also be represented by omega 4 minus omega 2. If I equate these two, if I equate these two, then I will eventually have omega 2 minus omega 1 is equal to omega 4 minus omega 2. So from here I can write omega 4 is a frequency like this. So this frequency is basically one frequency that will be sitting here in this location. In the similar way we can also generate also generate another frequency which is sitting in the left hand side with the same spacing. This spacing, this spacing and this spacings are the same spacing. All cases it is delta omega, delta omega and delta omega. So we will have instead of having two frequencies, we will have four different kind of frequency and they will going to mix it up and when they are mixing up, we will have four different frequency. That is why it is called the four, four way mixing. So they will going to mix and we will have four way mixing. Finally, we will have one phenomena and that is stimulated Raman uh, scattering. This is a very, very important phenomena. And the Raman effect we know that when I launch the electric field, some frequency omega p, so what happened that the molecule will go from one energy state to higher energy state and then it return back to say this is uh, this state is uh, say ground state. Uh, so this state 
is a ground state. Okay, let me use this one. This is the ground state and this is the first excited state say Fs. So, in the ground state and first excited state there is a frequency difference and this frequency difference is say omega. So, what happened that if I launch the electric field into the material, the material from goes from ground state. So, the molecules can go from ground state to higher energy state some virtual level and return back to first excited state. So, that means the molecule are now start vibrating in a different frequency since it is a first excited state. When it return back it will now launch uh, now uh, give uh, radiate some kind of frequency omega s. This frequency omega s plus omega will be equal to the omega p the pump wavelength. So, omega s is a frequency that we will have here will be omega p minus omega. So, this is the new frequency that will be generated by the system the Raman effect is well known. So, this new frequency will be generated and when this new frequency will be generated this frequency will be lower than whatever the frequency we will launch here. So, this is called the Stokes wave generation. So, in our in our course we will learn this Raman effect in detail. Also the same thing can happen the opposite kind of thing can happen. So, what the originally the molecules are in higher energy state and I launch an electric field with the frequency omega p these molecules can go to higher energy level and then return back to ground state. Since, so if I now write the energy conservation equation, so it will be a omega say this frequency this radiation is of the frequency omega a s. So, omega a s is nothing but omega p plus omega this is the energy conservation. If I multiply h cross, so h cross a s is equal to h cross omega p plus h cross this, this is the energy conservation. So, if I cut this h cross in all the cases, so this energy conservation thing can be right in terms of frequency only. So, this frequency omega s is basically omega p plus uh, uh, big omega. So, this basically gives you a frequency which is higher than omega p. So, this kind of process is called the anti Stokes generation. So, here if I now write these two things together I am launching an electric field here. I can generate some kind of wave here in the right hand side in the higher frequency side and also in the lower frequency side. If I generate in the higher frequency side which is normally not the case this is called the anti Stokes waves. And if it is generated in the lower frequency side, it is called the Stoke wave. So, some kind of energy is going from material to that thing. So, that is a second third order effect, third order nonlinear effect. So, we will going to study how these things is happening. So, energy is going from pump to these signals and they will going to amplify it is called the Raman amplification. So, we will also going to study the Raman amplification. So, these are the roughly the overviews of whatever the topics we will have in our hand. So, in the next few classes we will going to study chi 3 and then after we will start chi 2 and then after we will start chi 3. So, this chi 2 and chi 3 all the effects today's class we have discussed roughly the overviews of process and from the next class we will start in detail uh, for chi 2 effect and chi 3 effect how the nonlinear process is there the detail calculation and all these things will be there in the next class. So, with that note let me conclude here. So, see you in the next class. So, thank you for your kind attention and best of luck.